Video games can't be movies. No, that's stupid. <laughs> They're video games, right? <sighs> yes, they can. Told ya. During the beginning of the 7th generation of consoles back in 2006, it's an understatement to say that the Xbox 360 was doing much better than the PS3. In fact, Microsoft was actually dominating Sony in almost every regard. The 360 sold more units, the system itself was much more accessible, and the 360 had a fantastic lineup of exclusive games that made every Xbox owner the happiest human being alive. While it's obvious that PlayStation now has better exclusive games by a long shot, in the beginning, the PS3 didn't have many fantastic games going for it. Besides Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction, the PS3 had nothing. Then, some screenshots leaked of this game being developed by Naughty Dog, and at the time, the pics looked so realistic, nobody thought it was possible for a game to look this good. Then in late 2007, Naughty Dog released their PS3 debut, Uncharted Drake's Fortune, a third-person action-adventure game where you are tasked to find treasure and be awesome. Clearly inspired by Tomb Raider and Indiana Jones, the Uncharted series is now one of the best and most important modern series in video games, and yes, it is one of my favorites as well. Released almost 9 years ago, let's see how great the first Uncharted was, and how it holds up today. You play as the now iconic Nathan Drake, and during this journey you'll have new friend Elena Fisher who's a journalist, and Nate's best friend Victor Sullivan, also known as Sully or Victor Goddamn Sullivan. After uncovering an empty coffin that was meant for your ancestor Sir Francis Drake, you find his journal and discover that Francis Drake found El Dorado. You then travel all around South America to follow your ancestor's trail so you can find the statue of El Dorado and take it home. The story in Drake's Fortune is a simple one, but is an extremely well told one due to the game's phenomenal presentation compared to other games back in 2007. And keep in mind that this is the remastered version for PS4 that is part of the Nathan Drake collection. What's immediately noticeable is that the game is still enjoyable to look at. All of the colors are oversaturated and complement the game's lighthearted approach to treasure hunting and cinematic violence. While the standards for lighting, textures, character, and facial animations have risen dramatically since the game's release, it still looks great and manages to engage you with its lovable characters and the situations they go through. While the game mainly takes place on the same island throughout the story, you'll be visiting many different parts of the island that look distinctly different from each other, and it's because of this that you'll get that childlike sense of exploration, even considering the game's linear structure, although I can almost guarantee you're gonna get sick of the color green after a while. You'll be making your way through thick jungles, scaling and exploring a huge castle, go tomb raiding, wandering an abandoned city with a jet ski, and a few other locations I won't spoil for you. Like the color green, however, I've also gotten sick of exploring dark underground places just because of how repetitive and blind they are. But overall, Uncharted's visuals have held up very well, especially the facial animations, which still manage to convey everyone's emotions. The game's biggest appeal, which could also be said for the series in general, are the game's characters. Nathan Drake, who is portrayed by the godlike Nolan North, is now one of the most memorable characters in modern video games, and also happens to be one of my favorite characters in fiction. He reacts to everything in a human way, as he comments on how absurd certain situations are, and will congratulate himself when he does something he's proud of, regardless if it was big or small. He's intelligent and self-educated, and he's hilarious. He frequently makes sarcastic quips, whether he's with Sully and Elena, with the bad guys he's up against, and even when he's by himself. Drake is lovable, light-hearted, and amusing, and this is all because of the game's fantastic script and phenomenal cast. Elena is also lighthearted, and she's equally curious as Drake usually is just about different things. She's new to this adventure thing and Nate knows that. The chemistry between the two characters is so well realized that it's hard not to root for the two. And then there's Sully who's always interested in the money, but it is always clear that you two are best friends. From the way they argue with each other to how they make fun of things together. Sully is many things, but he is not a backstabber. He is your true best friend. And finally, we have the villains like Gabriel Roman and his sidekick Novaro and Eddie Raja. While you don't get to interact with the villains as much as I would have liked, they are truly intimidating and interesting characters. Sound design of the game is fantastic. The acting is top-notch in the world of video games, and sounds of the jungle and gunfire are also well done. 
However, the game's score is incredible. Composed by Greg Edmondson, the music is full of wonder and excitement. Intense songs play throughout all the combat sections, but when you're simply exploring, music will pop out and make epic moments much more memorable. And then there's the main theme song, which is not only one of the most memorable video game themes ever made, but it's simply a fantastic song that is now part of Uncharted's DNA and easily sums up what makes the Uncharted series so special in the first place. Overall, Uncharted's presentation was revolutionary when it first came out and holds up surprisingly well nine years later. The charm and the way the story is told will always stand the test of time and is the reason you have to play this game if you haven't done so already. Uncharted's gameplay is comprised of three distinct gameplay segments, the climbing parts, the shooting parts, and the puzzle solving parts. Let's start with platforming. While wandering around the island, you're going to be exploring some pretty creative ways. Nate has the upper and lower body strength like contestants on Ninja Warrior, mixed with the efficiency and stamina of… nobody else actually. Using the X button will have you climb pretty much anything and have you leap from ledge to edge. You'll have to shimmy across ledges, drop down to lower platforms, and swing from the occasional rope or vine. Climbing feels great and is quite fun under certain circumstances, but what makes it work so well is that Drake will reach out in the direction where you want to go. Basically, if Drake has his arm out, you will make that jump. While you will fall and die occasionally, and there are many moments where the developers don't make it clear as to where you're supposed to go, Uncharted's platforming is tight and enjoyable. In every Uncharted game, controlling Drake feels a tad different, and I'll explain how he feels in the sequels during those reviews. In Drake's fortune, Nate is stiff and moves mechanically. When you move Drake around, it feels as if he's moving forward before his legs actually start moving, which causes confusion at times. Also, the camera feels fairly limited at times when you want to look up above you, as well as when you're in tight spaces. Now, is this all a weird thing to bring up? Yes, but if you feel like you sometimes lose control of your character, well, now you know why. When you're not climbing around like a monkey, you're almost guaranteed to be shooting at bad guys, and there are a lot of them. Uncharted feels like a looser version of Gears of War, in which you have more freedom and flexibility to move around, while also being a third-person cover-based shooter, which wasn't so common in 2007. You can take cover pretty much anywhere you want, but switching from cover to cover doesn't feel well most of the time, and there are many moments where you run and want to take cover, but instead you roll and die because you stood up for too long. The actual act of shooting people is tight and responsive, however during the first half of the game, enemies take way too many bullets to go down, sometimes ranging from 5 to 6 rounds. You won't find out till halfway through the game that it's because the weapons you're using during the beginning of the game are terrible. Once you get weapons like the M4 Carbine, enemies will go down much more comfortably than before. Speaking of weapons, you are only allowed to carry two guns at a time, as well as some grenades. You have your one-handed weapon that can be used on ledges, and a two-handed weapon like an assault rifle, shotgun, grenade launcher, or a sniper rifle. While there aren't many weapons, they all feel genuinely distinct from each other. You can also beat the crap out of people simply by mashing the square button, although the game gives you the option to use what they call a brutal combo that is too complicated to use practically. Besides the fact that early on in the game enemies take too much damage, my other big complaint with the combat is the amount of enemies you'll be fighting. As enjoyable as shooting people may be, there are far too many moments where you are shooting an unreasonable amount of bad guys and it becomes boring after some time. The only other thing you'll be doing is the occasional puzzle solving. The few puzzles in the game are a nice change of pace, as while they are relatively easy to solve thanks to your handy dandy notebook, they do require some sort of brain power to get through. The game will take you around 9 hours to beat. Replay value consists of… not much. There are collectible treasures spread across the game that are pretty uninteresting, but other than that, there isn't much of a reason to play the game again. If you have the Nathan Drake collection for PlayStation 4, once you beat the first game, it's then time to move on the second game, which, spoiler but not really spoiler alert, is one of the best games ever made. Uncharted feels both like a tech demo to show off the PS3's graphical capabilities and a safe start to what would soon be one of the greatest modern video game series out there. It is a charming, character-filled game with an all-around outstanding presentation. 
The gameplay, while formulaic, is enjoyable and complements the game's story and characters. If you have never played an Uncharted game before and you have a PS4, then you have to buy the Nathan Drake Collection, which comes with all three Uncharted games. Or if you have a PS3, you could still pick this game up for an incredibly cheap price. But regardless, if you have never played Uncharted before, then you have to start here. Yes, the game hasn't aged well in some regards, but it is an overall enjoyable experience. This is the beginning of how it all starts, and just know, it's only gonna get better from here. Uncharted Drake's Fortune receives an 8.5 out of 10. If you want to see more Uncharted videos coming up soon, like the reviews for the second and third game, then if you haven't done so already, subscribe to Bathroom Gamers. To all the fans and the newcomers, let me know what you think of the original Uncharted in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and stay fresh! Told ya! Oh! <laughs> 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 it, that, that's the intro, that's the intro.